Hey guys, today we're gonna to be making this beautiful ornament. Isn't that so pretty? This is called a Kime Komi ornament. Um, it's a tucked fabric ornament on a foam base. We're gonna cut grooves in a foam ball and then tuck fabric into it. Um, and we've got a few other videos and different patterns and variations available here on this channel. So if you're interested in doing more of these, please check out all the other videos that we've got for you, um, provided that might puppy sits put for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm going to try to take you through making this step by step. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, let's talk first about the supplies that you are going to need to make this. So first of all, you need a three inch foam ball. Um, now I say three inches, you can totally use whatever size you want, but we do have a fabric template for you, which is gonna make cutting out your fabric pieces really simple, and this is meant for a three inch foam ball. Now here, we have a couple of options for getting your foam ball prepped and ready, because you will have to draw some lines on your foam ball. Now, option number one, and this is the really easy option, is we've got pre-marked foam balls. <laughs> we just had these made recently, they're pretty new to our Ornament Girl shop, and um, actually I drew these and then had them created. So they are perfectly ready to create this pattern and this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. However, with all that being said, you do not absolutely have to get this kind of ball. You can absolutely draw these lines yourself on a plain foam ball and I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. All right, and you're gonna need obviously some fabric. <laughs> so this design has eight swirls, which means you're gonna need eight of these pieces of fabric. They're about six inches long each and about two inches wide at their widest point. And altogether, it's really not a lot of fabric. I would say that it's probably an eighth yard or if that, I mean, it's a very small amount of fabric. And we will talk about cutting it here in just a second. So you're also going to need a trim. This trim is going to go between your fabric pieces. It's gonna help hide um, the pieces that you're tucking down in because it's gonna be a little bit messy in between. Um, and then I've also got my trim as my hanger and I've got some tucked into the bow here. Now this is one millimeter wide. That is very, very thin. You could actually go a little bit thicker. You don't wanna go super, super thick cause then it might be hard to work with and to crisscross each other here in the center points on both sides. Um, but a little bit thicker than this might actually be kind of helpful. And then whatever other embellishments that you're gonna want to use. Like I've got these little rhinestone buttons on either side and I've got some ribbon for the bow and the hanger. Now you're also going to need some tools. You're gonna to need something to tuck your fabric into the grooves that you cut on this foam ball. Um, for this, we've got a tucking tool. This works really, really well, and it's definitely what I would recommend, and I'll put a link to that right below the video. However, you could also use a really thin butter knife, something that's non-serrated, because you don't wanna actually cut or damage your fabric, but something that's similar to this that's non-serrated would definitely work. You will definitely need some scissors, of course, because you're gonna be cutting out this fabric, but also you're gonna need some really kind of fine scissors, like something like this, maybe even embroidery scissors or something like that, because we're gonna be cutting or trimming the fabric after we tuck it into the grooves, and you're gonna need something that can get really, really close to your foam ball. Now to cut the foam, you've got a couple of options. What I recommend is a hot knife, and it looks like this. And you can pick one of these up on Amazon. They're not that expensive, somewhere between $15 and $20. This will cut through the foam ball like butter and it will make it so much easier. It's also very dangerous. My dog is squealing in the background. You wanna make sure that you keep this away from children and pets. You don't want this to be anywhere near anybody that would accidentally hurt themselves. But if you don't want to use that, you could also use an X-Acto knife. That's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but it will work. All right, and if you're drawing your own lines, you're gonna need something like a pencil. You could use a pen also, but for this, I prefer a pencil because this is a little bit of freehand drawing that we're gonna be doing, and so if you're worried about messing up, a pencil is better. You can erase it or even leave it there, and it's so light that you might not be able to see it through your fabric, depending on the fabrics that you're using. Don't worry, it's really not hard, but it just might take you a couple tries. And if you're using a foam ball that has an equator line going around it, which has a ridge that you can actually feel, you're going to need a really, really fine piece of sandpaper to lightly sand that down after you draw your lines. If you've got the soft foam that we've got in the Ornament Girl shop, you won't have to do this because if you 
kind of rub your, rub your finger over it, it's really, really smooth and you won't be able to see it. But if you've got a ridge, well then when you go to put your fabric on your ball, you may be able to see that line through your fabric, which would be really unfortunate. We don't want that. All right, so we're almost there with the supplies. You're gonna need a couple more things. If you're drawing your own lines, then you will find using this template will make your life a lot easier. We've got these, um, the link will be right below this video where you can go and download this, it's free. You just cut this ruler out and it will help you mark your foam ball into eight segments if you're using a three inch size foam ball. That's what I'm gonna be showing you how to use here in this video. And the other template that you're gonna need, which I already mentioned, is this. This is the fabric cutting template. It's gonna help you cut these pieces of fabric out, again, for a three inch size foam ball. This also will be right below the video. And again, this is also free. Okie dokie, guys. I think that is everything. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Let's go ahead and start. So let's draw the lines first. And the reason why we wanna do this first is because when you have your little fabric template here, the way that you've drawn your lines is gonna make a difference of which way you use this um, template on the fabric. And I'll explain that in a second. But first of all, let's just go ahead and pretend that you do not have the pre-marked foam ball. And if you do have the pre-marked foam ball, you can skip past this part. And you're gonna to want to cut out one of these little rulers from this template that I told you about a couple of minutes ago. And once you've got that, here's what it looks like. We're gonna tape or pin this right around that center equator line on the foam ball. Remember that this ruler is made for a three inch size foam ball. Now, if you've got a different size foam ball and you're one, wanting to do this, you can still do it. Um, you're not gonna be able to use this ruler and you're not gonna be able to use that fabric cutting template, but you still can do it. Um, We've got other videos right on our YouTube channel which explain exactly how to mark any size foam ball into eight equal segments. That's what we're doing here. We're gonna mark this into eight equal segments and this little ruler already is pre-measured out for you. So I've got that pinned around the center of the foam ball and now I'm just going to make a little pencil mark at each of those lines that are already on that little ruler. And hopefully this is showing up in the video. I definitely don't wanna use a pen because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this without messing up. So now I'm gonna remove that little roller and we've got eight marks that are equally distanced around the foam ball. And you'll also notice that your foam ball has an imprint at the top and the bottom. And I'm just putting a little X over this just to darken it so that I can see it a little bit easier while I'm drawing my lines that I'm about to start drawing um, so that I just have like a place to pinpoint, a place to look at. Okay, so here's the fun part. Now this is really gonna matter on which hand you are too. I'm a lefty. If you're a right-handed person, of course you're gonna be holding it with your right hand and your curved lines that I'm about to show you how to do are gonna go in the opposite direction. So keep that in mind. What I'm doing is I'm gonna, I want my pencil to start here at one of those hash marks at the equator. My hash marks are a little bit to one side. They're a little bit closer to this side. That's fine. I can just take it and make it a little bit bigger like that. But I want my pencil to start at the equator like this. And I'm just gonna kind of rest the side of my hand right here because I wanna keep my hands still. That way I'm consistent on every single one of these curves that I'm about to draw. Hopefully this will make sense here in a second. You might wanna watch me before you just dive in. <laughs> All right, so I've got my hand sitting here and I've got my pencil point resting right there at the equator and I'm just going to draw a curve. Did you see how I didn't move? Like I didn't actually move my hand. I moved the ball and I just drew my curve like that. I'm gonna keep my hand in the same spot on that pencil so that I have the same distance between my hand and the pencil point for every one of these. And I'm gonna to move to the next one Again, I'm just gonna like start my pencil there on the equator line like this. And I'm just gonna do the same thing, same curve. And I'm gonna keep going all the way around like this. And I'm kind of not thinking about it too hard. I'm just kind of moving along because I don't, I don't wanna overthink it. And I wanna keep that same consistent swirl for every single one of them. And that's a little hard to see. I can tell in my in my monitor here that it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the line that even just, even though you can't even really see the lead very much, you can still see the line that this pushed into the foam. 
Now I haven't let go of my pencil, okay? And I'm gonna flip this over and do the same thing, but start. I'm starting at the equator again, but I'm gonna go on the opposite side of the foam ball. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that these curves kind of look like they are just continuing into each other. So I'm gonna start here again, keep it, putting my hand on the same spot on the foam ball. Here's my equator, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just spinning the ball more than I'm actually moving my hand. There we go. That actually is not terrible. <laughs> you should have seen how many times I had to do this for the one that I sent off to be made into the pre lined balls. I did it a million times. <laughs> and I had to do it with pens so they could see it. Okay, so we've got our lines. Again, like I said before, this might take you a few times, so don't get upset or frustrated. It can be a little bit tricky, but I promise you if you try a couple of times, you will get it. So now we get to cut this out. So before I was mentioning that an X-Acto knife will work, and that's fine if you have that, that will work, but I do recommend the hot knife, and I'm gonna show you that because I find it to be a lot easier and it's quicker and it just cuts through the foam like butter. Again, be really careful with this. All right, let's cut. So with this hot knife, I know I've said it a couple times and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but be really careful. Don't let your knife sink down in. It will do that, especially when you first start and it's really super hot, it's gonna wanna sink right in. So you really have to have some control here. And you want the tip to only go in like maybe an eighth of an inch or so um, and just be really controlled with it. So I'm gonna start at one of those poles I'm just kind of looking to see where I'm going to go. I'm going to start with one of those poles and just looking at, do you see how easily that went in? I went in a little too deep already. <laughs> Once you start to cut, it actually doesn't go as deep anymore. It's that very first, like when you first start and it's super, super hot, it will just melt right on in. Um, and then after you cut for a little bit, it it's almost like it cools down just a little tiny bit. Okay, so here's the thing with cutting this. Um, you want to make sure you don't cut too deep and you don't wanna keep the knife still for at all. Like you don't wanna keep it still at all because what will happen is it will just widen the groove. Um, and if it goes too wide, what's gonna happen is your fabric won't stay in there very good when you go to start tucking it in. It'll just pop right back out. So you want it to be a nice thin, narrow groove, but you don't want it to get too wide. And I know a lot of people have said, especially in our Ornament Girls Facebook group, I've seen people say that they're a little bit intimidated by using the hot knife because of this. But the truth is, once you get used to it, it really makes things so much easier. And just like I did with the drawing, I am moving the ball more than I'm moving the actual knife. I This is personal preference. I find that it's easier. I can steer the ball in the direction I want it to go and follow my lines a lot better. And I don't want the poles to get too um, worn out either. They do need to be a little bit wider than the rest of the lines because all the corners of every piece are gonna be fit up into there. So you do need space for that, but you don't wanna get them so wide that there's like, again, it won't hold the fabric in place. I'm not really thrilled with my start there. See how I kind of went sort of straight? But if that ends up being an ugly side, that'll be in the top of my ornament. Because <laughs> I can hide, I can hide that with a bow or whatever. The ends are a little easier to hide because whatever embellishments you use usually will help to hide anything there. Alrighty, see how quick that made it? Like butter. Okay, so my fabrics are actually really light, my white fabric anyway, and I'm worried about those little pencil lines showing through. So I'm gonna take an eraser, if I've got one, 
I've got a very nubby one. Let's see if I can do anything with that. And just try to erase some of that pencil a little bit. Now I don't want to press too hard because the foam will start to indent a little bit. But I just want to kind of get rid of some of that. I might have to go get a different eraser. Things I should have thought of before I started the video. Oh, finally found one. So if this was pen, I wouldn't be able to do this. It's still not perfect, but it'll help. And I'm gonna try to put the white pieces over the, the lightest ones. Another good reason to use the pre-lined ones. I don't have that, you won't have that problem at all. Okay, so I ended up having to sand these a little bit, my pencil lines, um, because my pink eraser left pink marks on my foam ball. <laughs> so when I made this one um, earlier, I didn't have this problem because I used the pre-line ball. So I totally didn't even think about this with my light colored fabrics. So maybe this is good. So you can learn from my mistake here. Um, not that you can really do anything else about it. If you're using a pencil and you have light colored fabrics, you're gonna have to make this as light as you can before you start. The sanding did help, and I'm gonna make sure that I put my pink fabrics and not my white fabrics on top of the worst sections. So with all of that, let's go ahead and get started with the fabric part. Okay, so you're just gonna need this template. Again, you can find the link to download this right below, and you can print it out. Cut out along the dotted lines and you will have this. And we're just gonna simply pin this to each piece of fabric that we want to use in our ornament. I've already got most of mine already cut out right here, um, but there is something that you need to keep in mind here. Notice that this is labeled the front. That's really important. If you are a lefty like me and you drew your curves from the center and up to the left like this, then you need to make sure that this is facing up when you cut out your fabric. That way your fabric will lay on the foam ball like this and the pattern side would be facing up. Now if you are right handed and you drew your curves like this, so they would be going the opposite direction, you're going to want to make sure that the front side of this template is face down on your fabric. That way your piece of fabric will sit correctly on the foam ball. Also, if you've got the pre-lined foam balls, you're gonna want this to be face up, okay? The left-hand version, because I'm a lefty and I'm the one that drew these. <laughs> so you need to make sure that this is faced up. And what I mean by it facing up is that it's sitting up and your pattern side is face up as well. That way your pattern side will be facing in the right direction on the foam ball. Of course, that's what we want. So what I'm gonna do now is just pin this to my fabric. I like to pin it at each end, that way it'll be held really nice and snug in place. And you could totally do a couple layers at a time, but again, make sure your fabric's not folded, like underneath, like you don't have a fold, folded piece of fabric, because then one of your pieces is gonna come out backwards after you cut it out. So you do wanna make sure that if you do do layers, that all the pieces of fabric that you're cutting out are all facing in the same direction. Now we're just gonna cut this out. My poor scissors are just squeaking away. Now if you're using a different sized foam ball, um, you could make this work. Um, if it's bigger, then just cut a bigger space around your template, just depending on how much bigger your foam ball is. If it's just a little bit bigger, you can get away with just using the template as kind of the shape. It make, it'll make it easier to cut out the shape and just make it a little bit bigger. Maybe leave a half an inch around it or something like that. All right, but there is the piece of fabric. So I've already got my other ones all ready to go here. Now let's talk about the order and arrangement of your fabrics really fast. So this is an eight segment foam ball. It's an eight segment pattern. Um, and I've got three colors, so that's like totally not even. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is do four of my white and then the other four pieces I divided in half, so two and two. So I've got two of the more rose colored pink, two of this little tiny floral pink, and then four of the glittery white. 
color. If you've got only two colors, you could just alternate them. Um, you could even do two sections, two sections, two sections, you know, just like that. Um, you could even do all different colors. You could do like a rainbow. So whatever it is that you want to do here is totally fine, but this is how I'm going to be arranging mine. Alrighty, let's, let's start. So I'm going to pick one of those darker spots here to cover with this darker color pink. That kind of looks like an ugly spot right there. So we'll cut, we'll go ahead and cover that up with my darkest color of fabric and just get that over with. Now what I'm doing first of all is just laying it over this the um, segment so that when I start to tuck I at least know that I've got like enough below it to fill that space because if you just start if you just kind of like go at it what will end up happening is your piece you'll be heading down that segment and your piece will be like way over there or something like that. So I just like to start by laying it evenly over the segment and just holding it in place. And I'm going to grab my tucking tool and I'm going to start up at one end like this and see I've already gotten a little bit too far into the center so we'll try to work it back around and I will tell you that it's hard for me to do this holding it out in front of me on a table I'm used to putting it in my lap while I do this it's just way easier that way for me Again, I'm just going to keep trying to redirect the bottom of that piece down over where I want it. And if you get a couple of bubbles, don't worry too much yet. We're going to go back and fix those. We're kind of trying to get it like so that it's held down in the right general direction. And then we're going to go back and fix things like this. So I'm taking my tucking tool and just kind of smoothing it out. And I'll come back to that in a second. I'm going to come over here now and start on the other side. And I want to look where my groove is because I'm starting to go into the wrong groove there. There we go. And I'm holding my finger down on top because what I don't want to happen is I don't want to pull it out of the other side as I'm going. There we go. So now what I want to do is just fix this and I think I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Because what can happen is you, you can sometimes get too much fabric pushed down in and then you can't fix the bubble that's beside it. There we go. That's looking pretty darn good. Some fabrics are easier to work with than others. There are some fabrics that are a beast. And actually my white glittery fabric, it's a little bit thicker because of that glitter on there. And that one's a little harder to push into than these two pink ones are. Okay, so we've got that pushed in. Now I was being really careful not to push too, like so much in there that I either widen the grooves or that I make it impossible to put another piece beside. Okay, so I was careful not to do that. But what that means is we're going to have pieces of fabric that are still sticking out and that is totally okay. What I'm going to do is just take my really fine scissors like I was describing in the supply section of this video. And I'm just going to carefully start trimming that away. And on the ends, you're always going to have a little more. And I like to try to take care of that now because what will happen is as you start adding all the other segments, it's going to start getting busy up there. So I don't like to have too much up there right off the bat. we got to leave space for all the rest of it. I'm actually coming out of the groove a little bit right there, so I need to tuck that back in before it comes out too much. Okay, so now I've got that tucked or uh, trimmed. I'm going to go back and now what's left, I'm going to go ahead and tuck down in because now there's only a little left, so we can just push the rest of that excess down in to get rid of it. I'm going to trim a little more right here.
Alrighty, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Almost. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next segment. And because of how I'm doing mine, where every other piece is gonna be white, it doesn't matter which direction I go in, I'm gonna need a white piece right now. So I'm doing the same exact thing, just lining it up, getting it where I want it. I know that um, some people uh, like to use actually a glue stick, put some glue on there and lay it on to help hold it in place and then begin to tuck. I've seen some people say that. So that's up to you, you totally can do that if you want to. See how I'm starting to go off? If I would keep on going, look how much I'd have all this over here and then I'd run out over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna just shift that back over a little bit. Now I really wanna get the grooves between finished pieces. So right here, I really wanna get this in there really hidden because I'm using that super narrow gold um, string as my trim between. And so I know that I have, I'm not gonna have a lot of, um, like it's not gonna hide it very well. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to really hide it before I even put the trim on. And so I really need to do a better job right here. I'm having a hard time because I'm used to doing this on my lap. I might have to switch to that here in a second <laughs> so that I can finish this. I think I'm gonna try to trim a little bit more off of there. There we go. I think I'm getting somewhere. Alrighty. Awesome. Let's move on to the next piece. So now I'm going to switch to my other pink. And then after this back to white and so on all the way around. And what I'll do is I will go ahead and finish this. Uh, because I don't want to make you have to sit through. It's going to take me probably a good little while to finish this and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've got and we'll go ahead and finish this off. All right, so I have finished tucking in all of my pieces because of the fact that I'm using this very super narrow trim in between of each of these pieces. I really tried to do my very best to get all that fabric tucked in as neatly as possible. If you're using a wider or thicker trim than this, then you don't have to be quite so careful. It's okay if you've got some little edges of fabric sticking up because it'll be more easily hidden with those wider trims. And I actually did wanna show you a couple of examples of other trims you could use just so that you don't like see only this and think that this is your only option. So here's a couple of other things that we've got or that you could use. Um, here is the same pattern, but I've used a pearl trim in between of all the pieces. And you can see that's much, much wider. And so anything that may have been sticking up in between the pieces is a lot more easily hidden with this. And this is really easy to maneuver around the curved parts of this pattern. So this is a really good option. And that comes in, this is a pearl, but it comes in colors. You could, you know, there's all sorts of stuff at like Joann's and even online that you could find like this. 
Now here's a totally different pattern. We've actually got the video for this exact ornament on the YouTube channel, um, but this is a good example of a different trim. This is a sequined trim that you could use. This is super wide, so like nothing is gonna show from underneath, no messiness. This is a really good one if you're having a hard time getting that fabric tucked in the grooves. Now with a wide trim like this, you do wanna be careful with curves because if you go too wide it might be hard to you know maneuver around those curves i think this one's actually would be okay because it's pretty flexible um, but just be aware of that when you're picking out trims you want something that's going to be able to move with the curves if you're doing this pattern you can also use a satin rat tail cord like this one this comes in all sorts of colors this is very easy to use and it is a little bit wider than my trim that i've got here and then finally, one last example on this pumpkin, I just used some plain old jute twine and that worked really well. I was going for kind of like rustic look here and this will work great on these types of ornaments. So hopefully that kind of gave you some ideas. Let's go ahead and start putting this trim on. Now I totally forgot to talk about this in the beginning of the video, um, but I'm gonna be using Beacon's 3-in-1 craft glue. I like this kind of glue because it's tacky, so it'll really grab the trim um, and hold on to it as you're working your way around. You don't want it to be moving around and spreading glue everywhere. But you do want to be careful with this glue because it does stick to everything. So if you get it on your clothes or if you get it on other parts of the ornament, like in the fabric, it could possibly stain it or just stay there forever. So be really careful. Um, you only need a tiny bit. I'll show you how we're gonna do it, but I do like to use this. It does dry clear as well, which is really nice, especially if you accidentally have some seeping out the sides, you want it to dry clear so you don't see that. So what I'm gonna do with this is I want to start at one of the poles and just do one section at a time. Let me get it going here and just make a really super thin line right down one of those swirls all the way to the opposite pole. I'm gonna find the end of my trim and I'm just gonna stick that up there where I started. And then I'm gonna just lightly wrap it right around. Now with this thin trim, I'm not gonna push it down in there too much because I don't wanna get it, I don't want it to get lost in the grooves because it is really thin. So I'm just gonna make sure it's sitting there in the glue and just let it kinda sit where it falls there. And then I'm just gonna move right up the opposite side. I wanna go up the exact opposite swirl and that's gonna be right here. So there's four sections on either side of this. So let's go ahead and get some more glue. Right back up to that starting point. Alrighty, so now we're back up to the beginning part where we started. And so I'm just gonna continue this right down the next segment, right beside the one that I started with. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around, just going down and then back up until I have covered all the sections and we will be right back to where we began. All right, so we've arrived back to the top. All the pieces, all the segments are covered. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a trim. Now, there's a couple of different options for finishing this off. I'm doing a very simple version on this um, particular one. And if you want a couple of additional ideas for topping these kinds of ornaments, please check out the YouTube channel because we've got lots of other ideas there. And I will show you what I did here for this one. 
So for this version, I've got little strings of glue everywhere. <laughs> for this version, I actually turned it sideways. I made the pole the, the front of it instead of the top. So for this one, I'm actually gonna hang it this direction and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. But for this one, I stuck a little cute little button on either pole where all of those lines converged. And then I made a bow and a hanger on the side and now that is the top so that it hangs like this. And that is really pretty, but I wanted to do something different for this one. Um, so I'm gonna actually just put the hanger right at one of those poles and then put some beads at either end as well. We're gonna be real simple here. And I wanna start by making the hanger and I'm just gonna cut like maybe 10 inches or so of my trim. However long you want to make your hanger and I'm going to put the ends together and just tie the ends in a knot to hold it, to hold that loop. Now I'm going to pin this right to the top, but I'm going to make it decorative. I've got a pearl tipped pin here, a teardrop pearl pin, and I've got a clear crystal bead. I'm just going to put that bead right there on that pin and then fish this right through that knot that I just made. And I'm putting it right down through the top, right down through the through the um, top of the knot so that it will hang kind of evenly like this on either side of it. And I'm just gonna pop that right down in the middle of one of those poles. And I'm just gonna leave the little ends there. Actually, I might snip off a teeny bit on this one side to make it a little more even. Nope, oh, it's not really even now. It's cut a little too much off there. You could leave them on. You could even make them longer. You can do whatever you want. You can cut them all the way down. And there's my hanger. And just to make this pretty on the bottom as well, when you're, when you're looking at it from the side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with one more pin and bead and just pin that right there at the bottom. Like that. And that way when you're looking at it from the side, it looks really pretty. All right, so that is that, guys. What do you think? Pretty, right? I like this. This is nice and simple. This one's kind of froofy <laughs> and this one's like the simple sister of it. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed making this. I hope that you found that it wasn't as hard as what they look like they are. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will help you out the best that I can. Oh, and don't forget that you can get those templates at the links right below. They are totally free and I hope that you find them helpful. Thanks for watching and happy ornamenting.